who was the guy that walked before you? Outside, you know, you've kind of already talked about uh, from a leadership standpoint, but who did you guys look up to position wise um, that played before you? I could also say Skowski as well, but I don't want to. I want to switch it up, so I'll go uh, Bale Inspector. Um, he was my freshman year. It was his fifth year, and just the way that him, Skowski, and even uh, Nolan just attacked every single day, like just like pros would, like coming every day, treatment, film, um, more treatment, and just the way they took care of their bodies, and it really just taught me as a young guy like what it took to be great um, at this level. So, but um, definitely Balin. Just he was just the example as a football player, as a man, and as all the things. And now he's up there in Buffalo balling. So that's just it's huge for me to see that. But uh, definitely Balin. He was an inspiration for me. Uh, I'll say JP uh, Jalen Phillips. I feel like you know, especially now, you know, I got the same class schedule that he had whenever he was here last year, and just seeing what he did last year, kind of you know, kind of set footprints for what I do now and just, you know, taking care of my body, acting like a pro now, you know, having all this free time that I have, just being able to get, you know, extra treatment, extra rehab, you know, extra recovery, you know, eat right, get on a regiment, watch extra tape, get extra work in, you know, it's just been, it's just been great, you know, and he was a great example and taught me a lot of things. And then Nolan Turner as well, you know, just him, especially him being back now, it's great, you know, being able to have somebody to, you know, ask questions to who's been there. And um, somebody I can still learn from, you know, and I can still learn from everybody. But, you know, I just feel like he's done it, you know, the way that it's supposed to be done and somebody I want to follow. So it's great to have him here as, like, a mentor. You want to add anybody else? Or you <coughs> no, add yeah. I mean, I yeah. would add Nolan, but that's yeah. all I'd say. You, you are, yeah. I mean, you, can, you already went there, so yeah. that's totally fine. Okay. Um, the the <laughs> last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is game day. We've talked a lot about what we're going to miss and things that, you know, are, are going to come to an end, but also tons to look forward to, obviously, in the season. But favorite thing about game day that you're going to miss ultimately when this is all said and done? Fans storming the field after the games. And I know T-Bone hit on it earlier, but it is it is surreal, like – like he said, you could play in the worst game possible, but um, the six-year-old kid that wants to be a Clemson football player who looks up to you, plays your position, and he does not care. He just wants a picture with Tyler Venables, RJ Bear Mickens, Carter. Bear Carter, whoever it is. He just – and that's, like, life-changing for him. And, like, for us, like, I just think it's so special for me because I put myself in their shoes. Like, I used to love going to games and – taking pictures with the older guys and just <clears throat> dreaming of being there one day. But um, that's just – it's so special for me just – then, like, seeing my family come down afterwards too. and But just, you know, just – it really just – what did you say it did? Uh, humanize Humanized the yeah. experience. Because, like, so much goes into a game day, like so much stress and anxiety. But after that, and you're just – it's just all good vibes. So I'll say fans storming the field. I think that's a word humanizes. I think that's a word. I hope it is. Yeah, I think for me, I would say the the um, if you were to say within a game, I would say the third downs. Those are, you know, the the pressure is the highest for the offense, and it, so is it for us. Um, and you know, especially if you get them to like a third and long, and they know we're about to come after them, um, and you can really feel a team, especially at a home game, you can feel the opposing team kind of suffocate underneath our atmosphere and just how unbelievably loud it is. And I mean, the, it's actually shaking. Um, and it's, I think it's the coolest thing ever. When you, like, everybody can feel it. It's like, oh, they're so screwed. Like, it's it's over. Um, and then especially once you get that stop and the crowd just goes crazy. It's like, if, especially if you get, like, a sack or an interception, just how loud it is and how, like, exhilarating it is to be on the field and to be a part of something like that is the coolest thing ever. So... You know, if any fans are watching, it's like there's you play a huge, profound impact, and you know, shout our out to the fans. Yeah, yeah, get loud and through now. Uh, I'll probably say the day before the game. Like, I mean, I don't, it doesn't count as game day, but uh, the Friday routine that we have, you know, everything, just the meetings, going to the movies, the dinner, everything is just, you know, you really, you know, appreciate it. You know, whenever the season's not, you know, around, you're just like. 
you know, waiting for that Friday to come. And it's, like, the best day ever. You get to spend time with your buddies, you know, get to go to the room and chill and, you know, go to the movies, popcorn, everything, sit with your guys. Uh, it's it's really, I'm definitely going to miss that probably the most. I have loved your points of view on, like, things that you're going to miss because <laughs> they are so, on, like, on point. I have literally heard these things. Okay. So it's so it's so cool for me to hear you Can I say, say one it more? from, like, Wait, the, no, no, yes. I'm sorry. I, I don't, I, I, I'm sorry. No. Wow. Please do. No, when they were talking, it just, like, sparked it. But I would say, like, home game was, like, the fourth quarter video. Like, that. That's because you're in it the most. That's why. That's not what I'm trying to. Do. <laughs> no, but, oh, that's me. Like, that's me. No, <laughs> watched no, him do that. The fourth quarter. The fourth quarter video is insane. Like our video crew, like how they get all the plays and come up with a different um, idea every every single week. It's just it's crazy. And like my freshman year, I didn't think they could top that video. Then sophomore year, they topped it. Then they topped it again last year. So like. I don't know. They just do such a great job with with the fourth quarter video and just all the content that they produce. But you know that it's just the most like unbelievable feeling because like the fans are going crazy. You get to see the highlights from last week, and it's just it really just kind of gives you like a lot of like momentum going into the fourth quarter. Can I ask like a silly question? Please. Couple, couple, I, uh five hundred K or dinner with Drake. Five hundred K. Five hundred K. Yeah. But you know you can learn so much. What, what are you going to learn? Like, what? All right. I got Coach Sweeney Take to learn wisdom. from, bro. I, I, Take I'm sorry. Bro. He's literally going to. That was a bad question. I need a match. That wasn't a bad question, but it's valid. But like, 500K? Bro. Maybe if I was like a Drake super fan. If I was like from Toronto, then I'd probably say Drake, but I'm not from Toronto. But like, what, uh, what are you going to get out of a dinner from Drake? Like, realistically? A picture, clout. I don't know. Yeah. So then, who dead or alive are we having dinner with? LeBron James. <laughs> for more than five for five hundred k, you picking LeBron James? No, Wait, we're no, not doing. No, no, no. 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 We're not, we're, the, the money is out of it. Money. RJ, settle down. Uh, He's like still about the five hundred k. No, yeah. just just dead or alive. Dead like or who alive. who are you having dinner with? Okay, that was LeBron. a hard quick. LeBron. Okay. LeBron. Yeah, I, he's besides my dad. He's been my role model. Like just growing up. Like aside from even like what he does on the basketball court, just building schools and. Mm -hmm. Just the way he gives back. So, and what would you ask him? What would I ask him? If you got one question. I'll just pick his brain, just see how it, how he attacks opponents and uh, his mindset and things like that. I would say Tom Brady. Yeah, just I was about to say Tom Brady. The way that he prepares and the way, I mean, he played in the league for what, 23-ish? Something like that. 99. Yeah. Like that makes plus. so much sense for me for you to say him. Why? It just, it just, <laughs> you must know. no, it just but tracks. You know what? Like it, it just tracks. Like your personality, the yeah. regimen, and and just I, you feel methodical to me. I don't know. Right. Like it, it tracks. Yeah, I mean, he played and he was in the league for what around twenty ish years, and he was, I think, like forty eight or forty seven percent of the time he played in the Super Bowl. He played in like what was it ten Super Bowls? He won seven, lost three. I think. So that's like 50% of the time he was in the Super Bowl in his NFL career. That's crazy to me. So I just that's the amount of success I would want to learn from. So You got to give a different Tom, person. You got to give a different person. A different person other than Tom Brady. Yeah, mm. you're, you're number two if Tom's one. If Tom is one, who's number two? I, I really don't know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh, uh, Drake. Drake. Okay. I feel like I could learn so much. You know, I feel like he's made it, you know, from nothing. I feel like he started from the bottom. I need a man. Oh, my gosh. Started from the bottom. <laughs> he's done. No, really, no pun was intended. Got, you definitely got <laughs> oh that. You know, I, I feel like he really came up, and I feel like he knows a lot and, you know, seen a lot and knows, you know, how to be successful without football. It is is Drake football? the greatest rapper alive? Mm. Yeah, I feel like he is because I feel like he's really, you know, adapted to music. He started a long time ago, and I feel like he's changed his flow. It's not, and the songs don't all sound the same. He has different flows and different beats and everything. And I feel like, you know, it speaks speaks truth. I feel like it's good. You must have never heard Yeet. Is that your favorite rapper? Look at my shirt. Uh, who, who is your favorite rapper, T-Bar? Uh, let's go with YTB Fat. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> or no, you, you're you're not serious. serious. No, yeah, I'm not serious. I don't, even, I've never, I don't even think I've heard a song from YTB Fat. I've just heard that in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, like this is that fat. I'm like, all right. Like, fat. What am I, like? I have had so much fun talking to you guys. I hope you have had fun. Another episode of Two Right Turns from Studio C in the Clemson Athletic Branding Institute. I'm your host, Dodger Davidson. We'll see you on the next one.